Well, greetings to viewers all around the world. Welcome to CGTN special coverage, The Common Path. I'm CGTN reporter Wu Bing, and today I'm here to explore concrete examples of what the Chinese government means through its drive to common prosperity. And what you've just seen is the beautiful bird's view of Xinchuan Village in eastern China's Zhejiang province. And joining me now today is Mr. Zhang Tianren, president of Tianneng Co Limited, a top manufacturer of batteries for e-bikes and electric cars in China. He's also the CPC party secretary of Xinchuan village in Guzhou city of eastern China's Zhejiang province. Uh, Zhang Dong, mm -hmm. first, so, Mr. Zhang, please say hello to our viewers. Hello to our viewers. I'm the Tianneng Kongu Jetan. I am the Tianneng Energy Control Columnate. Our special program will also be joined by Leon in Uganda. He's going to explore a local rice farm in central Uganda. And before we start our live stream session today, let me give you a brief introduction of Xinchuan Village. The village has, uh, has over 3,000 residents and it covers an area of over 10 square kilometers. The per capita disposable income of the village is 150,000 yuan, which is over uh, 24,000 US dollars. And that is about five times of the national uh, leverage. So uh, the village has gone through some major changes over the years. Uh, to give you a sense of it, in 1988, there were only six private vehicles in the village. And uh, uh, in 2021, they have over a thousand private cars, basically each one, a one, at least one for each household. So how did it get to this? Now we are here at where it all began, Tianneng Co Limited, and I'm, I'm going to explore how this village has helped the local, eco uh, local economy grow. And uh, you know, the village, uh, the, the, the company, the Tianneng Co Limited, used to be a village property. And in 1988, Mr. Zhang bought the property for 5,000 yuan, which he borrowed from other people. Uh, Zhang Dong, you spent 5,000 yuan and to buy this tenant Columnate. At that time, 5,000 yuan was a huge money. So which brought you to this idea? What brought you to this idea? In the year 1988, our country still suffered from the energy shortage. We have a village company, so I decided to undertake it. Then we are going to address some of the energy insufficiency issues in our country. And for many years, this motto has inspired me. So I was quite confident about the development of our country. So after you have taken off this company, have you ever encountered any difficulties? At the very beginning, we started from scratch. We have no market and we have no techniques. We are relying our, on our own innovation and figure out what is the most needed in the market. We are sticking to two principles. The first one is that innovation is always at the core of all the principles. The second part is that we are adopting on a green development trajectories. Battery used to be a very traditional product, but currently it is transforming into a new energy product. Inside of a workshop where they are making batteries for electric bikes, and uh, let's go find out more. And as required, we need to wear face masks when entering the workshop. Mm -hmm. 那么按照要求呢, 我们也要这个在进入场, mm -hmm. All right, so as introduced by Mr. Zhang, as business uh, picked up, they are receiving orders from all across the country. So they needed more employees, and the local villagers became the first to recruits. And uh, in this workshop, actually, they have a lot of local villagers working for Tianneng Co Limited. And we are going to talk to one of the uh, employees in here. As you can see, that they are making a battery. They are packing the batteries and delivering it all over the country. And uh, we are going to talk to one of those people in the workshop. Hey, 你好. Uh, 
呃，我是二零零八年三月进的公司的。I entered this factory in、uh, the year two thousand eight December. So currently, I'm working for this factory for the past thirty years. I am the head of this assembly factories, responsible for manufacturing and production, and equipment maintenance. You've been working in this factory for several、uh, dozens of years. So, what have changed in this factory? When I was joining this factory, our family economy is not that well good. So, after I have、uh, in this,、uh, I ha have been working in this factory. I bought my own apartment. I bought my own car, and I also have two kids to feed up. The batteries, actually, the batteries here,、uh, as business grew, they are、uh, opening more factories to produce the elements、uh, for making the batteries. Each,、uh, every element of the battery actually is、uh, produced by other secondary companies and finally assembled here. 那么，张总，呃，我知道除了直接呃招聘我们本地的 ，You recruited the local villager directly. And apart from recruiting from the local villagers, I think you must have some of the upstreaming and the lower streaming industries. Can you give us a brief introduction? Thank you. To make a company booming that is going to bring us the common possibilities, we have some of the packaging suppliers, the cotton manufacturers, and the internal membrane manufacturer. We have. Subcontracted these manufacturers. Another village. We have other different companies supporting the normal operation of our Tianan Kolomatit. We have also invited all kinds of customers to hold share of our company, and they also provided us a very wide channel for the market. The booming of one industry means there are a lot of channels for the government. We have the supplying companies. We believe that today there are so many local villagers, united by one family, family providing the services in the upstream and downstream of such industries. There are so many new villagers working in our factories. Some of them owns the equity. Some of them has a board owners. Some of them owns the stock shares of our company. I think the villagers is very、um, prosperous and they enjoy a very healthy and prosperous life. You have introduced us. All the villagers actually recycled the battery. They not only manufactured the batteries; they have also recycled the batteries, which is also a very important benefit to the environment. In the company, we have always emphasizing about the green and cycled development. We have recycled the battery, collect all the batteries. I think after the villagers collect the batteries and bring it to our factory, they they got a commission. For the second time, this has not only bring some of the economic income for the villagers. This is also going to lower down the environmental risk. Development mode has a sustainable development mode where they can protect the environment. But there was a darker history of the village when pollution was vast by byproducts of high con of con energy consuming industries. And、uh, over the years, so in 19,、uh, in 2004, Mr. Zhang led a petition of closing all the、uh, polluting companies, and、uh, that was uh, uh, not easy. So now we are going to the heart of the village to take a look of what's changed over the years, and it's going to take us five to ten minutes to drive there. So now we head over to Liyang in Uganda.
Well, very amazing weather in Kampala, in Kalungu District, Uganda. To paint you a picture of exactly where I am, at this Zong rice field, it is 100 kilometers south of the capital, Kampala. The marvel that is this rice field is quite amazing. Just by uh, the farther to my left is a major highway. That highway transports, uh, well, travelers from, well, the capital city, Kampala, to the western part of uh, the country, and also vice versa. Very amazing, though, is that for many of the travelers along this particular area, the key thing they can find is this rice farm, the Zong rice farm in Uganda. It is the biggest rice farm currently in the country, producing quite a huge amount of rice that is consumed by Ugandans. Now, this farm started about eight years ago, and amazingly, it's transformed the lives of people in this particular area. This place was known for the cultivation of plantain, that is bananas. What you see here now is the transformation of what used to be a wetland into arable land growing thousands and thousands of kilograms of rice. A different kind of rice brought in from China. I have been told that it is a super hybrid uh, type of rice that is grown here, a different transformation that it has been for this particular area. But to run us through how it has all gone from the beginning, I am going to talk to Peter Gan. Peter Gan, thank you very much for being around here and taking us through this particular process. Run me through how it all began, when the farm began and how it has all been going for you. Okay, fine, sir. Uh, I, I'm very happy and very proud to have that. Yeah, we are the largest farm now in Uganda. Uh, for sure, actually, at the beginning, uh, it was uh, here, bushed, and uh, it was full of those uh, forests and those uh, ant hills. So, the day when we come to Uganda, and we see many people they are eating those single food, cassava, matoke only. But in, our, in China, our village, every people eating the rice. And the rice has more nutrition than other main food. And uh, we see the climate in Uganda is so nice. Why they don't have rice? And if you go to the market, and you can see every rice is from another country. So that's uh, the time I decided I want to try rice in Uganda. Hey, fortunately, the rice we have we tested very well at the beginning. Then that's why we get our friend Mr. Zhong, and he joined with us. So that's why we developed and we started to uh, grow in rice very well in this country. Well, very interesting story there and very interesting start. What kind of rice is being cultivated here? I've been told it's a new type of rice, a hybrid rice from China. Explain to me how different it is. Uh, it's true. Uh, we did some research about the seed from Africa, but we didn't see any good seed in Africa, including Tanzania, Kenya, and other countries. Finally, that's why we decided to test our seed from China. And, and it is lucky and we get successful. This seed is from China and it is a special seed by technology. We, can, we may call it a hybrid seed. And which can help us uh, first, it is uh, suitable for the climate in Uganda. And then next, it can get more yield. And uh, then it is uh, more delicious than the local rice. So that's why we are using this seed. Well, um, of course, I, I, I've, I've known that uh, it takes approximately five months to full, fully mature from the transplanting right to the field and uh, the harvesting. And that makes a very, very big difference. But you say something about the weather, the climate. We are under the equator or along the equator line. I, th I think this works very well with the type of uh, uh, farming you have here. How different has that been with the water around and the weather? I can say, you, 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 the whole Uganda, uh, especially this side of Masaka area, it has a very good climate and a very good water resource and a very good land fertilized. Uh, comparing with another district, 
this area it is better for the rice growing. Mm. Thank you very much, Peter, on the explanations on how this uh, rice farm has been operating. And definitely, uh, like I said earlier, it is uh, the biggest rice farm in uh, Uganda. Uh, definitely, it has uh, helped change and transform the livelihood of people in this particular community. I have been told 5,000 people are employed on this farm alone, not just the people from within the community, but several people from across the country. And well, to explain to us deeper on how this farm has transformed the livelihoods of people here is uh, Victor Mpinga. Victor, you have been here from the start of uh, this rice farm. You are a local. Uh, you told me earlier that uh, you own a part of, uh, well, 10 acres of land growing this rice. How much of a difference has uh, this rice farm being here changed, one, your own life and probably the lives of several other people within the area? Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Victor Mpinga, the manager at Zong's Industry. I'm so proud of the factory coming in our area. Uh, I personal, it has changed my life and the life for the young youth. Uh, actually, we didn't know how to grow rice. We had experts from China, like Mr. Peter Gan. They came in with a big investor called Mr. Zong, and an, an initiative of the current Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Vincent Mablanga Chief Sempija, because it was a discussion between them that how can we bring that land we are seeing on Massacre Road into yours. When they came in, they came in with their technology of growing rice with the local people. And that's why you're seeing we are using, the most number here is casual laborers. They earn a lot and, they, and they're able to, to sustain their life around. And also they have got that knowledge of growing rice. That's why you're seeing that the number of people is increasing in the outgrowers around. Yeah, I think it has really changed us seriously. Well, change the lives of the people here, but even still the farming methods. I, I've spent a, uh, a couple of hours on this farm. I have seen uh, the mechanization of, uh, of, of things on this farm. Quite different from how African farms are. are. Uh, you have machines coming, th uh, coming in to do the harvesting, but importantly, the drones now are used for the spraying. I believe that is changing the sense of efficiency and the locals too are benefiting from those methods. What difference have you seen? Uh, right now, uh, uh, we, we are seeing a big difference, seriously. Uh, the, like the machines you're seeing, the combining harvester behind you, those machines, they simplify the work, like the drones, the spraying takes a few hours, and the, even the chemicals that we use, we use uh, the, the, where the quantity is not too much, uh, actually, it saves in expense of in terms of money and 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 in also in labor. Uh, what I can say about what what I can say about this new technology, uh, it has changed the mindset of agriculture in our community. Like people have learned that with this new methods of drone, it can also make the work easier and also with this. Uh, with this method of using the tractors for like plowing, it easier. It makes the work what easier. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, now run me through what exactly the um, the quantities of land are on this farm, uh, and the quantity of yields that come out of uh, what you plant here, and even still the supplements from uh, the outgrowers. Mm, okay. Uh, right now the land is seated on 2,000 acreage, though we do a rotation of farming, like. Like we don't use all the land, yeah, we have to leave the land to get mature after a season, and then we ship to another area, uh, uh, and then from that, uh, we find ourselves like uh, the outgrowers who I who are around. We provide them with uh, machineries like the tractors. They come in and we share with them, and also when it's time for milling, the factory is there. They mill at a low price since they are outside growers like for example a kilogram goes for oh, for 150 for milling which is a very small rate compared to other areas um, what can I say else like uh, the cells the cells uh, like if their race is good the market is there 
we buy their rice or they are free to sell where they want because the, the demand is high. Like rice is also a food security in Uganda, right? I think it has, it has improved the life hold of the people around in terms of food security. Then you find that these people, they bring in their rice and we buy it at a good price. That's why you're saying it is expanding in outgrowers. Well, the expansion uh, is, is quite big and I have uh, quickly learned that uh, uh, thousands of uh, the farmers have come here. They have been skilled in uh, planting this hybrid type of rice from China. They have been allowed to have their own farms so they can extend the amount of production of rice within this particular area in Kalungu district, central part of, of Uganda. Uh, Victor, Tell me yet again, the skilling process for the young farmers that have come through here, how, how much has that been uh, important to the progression on rice production in this country? Okay, the skills, uh, because way back people used to do uh, rice on, without this technology of irrigating in, they came in to know how, how this method can be useful, most especially near the shores of Lake Victoria and in swampy areas. That's why you're seeing that the yield that we are getting, it is high because the outgrowers have started learning how to use their neighboring lands, which are just surrounded by the lake shores and the wetlands, which is not bad like that uh, you're hearing that rice shouldn't be done in wetlands. I think in China people are doing that. And it's not all about, it, it's not all that land which is around the lake shores it's a wetland no because here where we are standing right now these lands are owned by people they are owned by people we go on increasing the land the land the land we have clear permits from the NEMA and we are satisfied with our certificates i think we are doing the right procedure of rice around here yeah. and uh, there's quite a lot for the people to learn and and, and the workers from other community here to, to, to earn and put something in their pockets and of course take care of their families, take care of uh, uh, other amenities of, of life. Uh, just to tell you uh, what uh, some of the tools that are around here, just uh, to my right is uh, a harvester that is used in uh, the process of, uh, well, picking up the rice once it is matured and uh, quite an amount of rice comes through from these rice fields. Uh, several people, thousands like I said earlier, are employed on uh, these uh, rice farms and there's been a drastic change in uh, the lifestyles of people in uh, this particular community. But on a whole, uh, Uganda is transforming into, uh, well, a rice, an extensively rice consuming uh, country and just as much the quantities that are produced locally are not quite enough for, 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 for the consumption of uh, Ugandans. The population here is uh, approximately 44 million people in this country. This area alone has uh, thousands, uh, uh, over 200,000 people living here. And therein, of course, jobs have been created. Therein, farms have opened up and several other uh, things have uh, been uh, developed in this particular area. But getting back to Victor, uh, as we wind on this, uh, the, the type of rice that is grown here, like you said earlier, has transformed the livelihood of people. But what are the specifics? What are the quantities? What are the yields that can come out of the rice that is planted here? Okay, the yields, uh, they depend on the amount you have planted and, the, and on the acreage. Uh, the yields that come, comes out, it, compared on the, on the other types of rice, I think it's doing well. If it's the other type, type of rice is making 60%, at least this one is making 80%. That's why you're seeing that the outcome is very good uh, and it's easier to manage and, it, and to maintain. Like in planting, uh, you find that uh, a single, let me call it a single mother, it produces too much young babies eh? and it goes like for one kilo. But the other local seeds we used to, which is not the new technology for the Chinese um, type of seeds, it, it used to give like two to three. But for this new technology, the hybrid from, oh, from China, it, it produces so much babies so that you can get more. So the yield is, uh, is quite, uh, quite uh, substantial and quite enough. Um, I have also learned that uh, the amounts that come from uh, this rice farm uh, can be are exported 
to the neighboring countries. Um, how is that going in terms of uh, uh, the exportation of rice from uh, Uganda? Okay, like we are having exporters from different, from the neighboring areas, like Rwanda, you find like uh, Sudan. Uh, after seeing that the rice is nice and it's on market, uh, with transport we have ve we vehicles, they come in and we make business. Transportation is easier. Yeah. Well, very, very exciting there. And um, definitely uh, the, the, the ex expansion uh, of the land here is uh, enormous. Uh, I have also learned that uh, the farm intends on uh, extending its, uh, its grounds within this particular area and expanding through uh, the other wetlands that uh, exist. And, of course, um, many Ugandans look forward to the opportunities that come through from uh, this particular farm and several others that may be placed across the country. Uganda is moving towards, uh, well, greater rice consumption and that still remains a major cash and step of food in the country. Greetings to viewers all again. Welcome back to Xinchuan Village. And uh, here we are by a riverbank and a beautiful public park. And we have this amazing view of green mountains here. And, uh, y but all this, you know, th it comes after a long struggle of shutting down polluting companies in the 2000s. And uh, now let's go in to talk to one of the residents here. Hello. So how about you recently? I'm doing quite fine. Are you satisfied with what you are doing? Yes. I used to stand on the river bank and figure out the river was quite was quite muddy. And the river's color was between yellow and green, but with more money to supply the cleansing campaign, the water quality is becoming better and we actually enjoy a very good ecological environment, which is just representing one of the important notifications of the President Xi Jinping. Green is God and we uh, here we used to be the uh, this river used to be where the villagers has throw the rubbish into but here with more fund to supporting the infrastructure schemes the water is becoming clearer and at night after dinner a lot of people take a walk alongside the river so I really want to thank our party and you leadership Mr. Zhang, just as he have introduced us, for a quite long period of time, our village suffered from a lot of pollution. So what does this pollution come from? Historically speaking, we are a village with abundant resources. We have opened up our mine refinery oil and petroleum refinery, which is polluting the environment. And a lot of villagers at that time, they don't care about the environment. They threw the rubbish into the river. And when there is any flood coming from the mountain, it is carrying all the rubbish to the lower stream of this river. So at the time, if the Villagers want to dry their clothes and their own yacht. That coal ashes is going to attach to their clothes. And around 2030, when President Xi Jinping has came up with the idea that he is going to set up the pilot city for the ecological conservation, our village was trying to give it a shot. 
we have closed up the pollution, the pollut, uh, the pollution factories. We have also done a local campaign to cleansing the river. We changed the local villagers' behavior, and we have done a lot of persuasive work from the villagers' villaging committee. We actually listed all the factory producing pollution, and we suspended their manufacturing and production. Some of the factory upgraded their manufacturing capacity. During that period, they actually used better equipment to lower down the pollution that they produced. At that time, in our village, we have the battery manufacturer for battery. We actually redesigned the manufacturing process for the battery, make it lighter and harmless to the environment. Throughout the manufacturing life cycle of the battery. All the process is being cleaned, and after the usage, the battery is not going to harm the environment. So after our company has grown, it is also leading the local village out of poverty. It provides a very good means for the villager to catch up with the. Economic development models. This is a very typical example of President Xi Jinping's idea that the rejuvenation of a village must be depending on the industries. We can look to Xinchuan Village for some answers, and uh, uh, in 2000,、uh, before President Xi Jinping. Uh, became China's president in 2013. He was the party secretary of Zhejiang CPC Provincial Committee, and in 2005, he paid a visit to Huzhou City in eastern China's Zhejiang Province, where these words are still ringing some years:、uh, "Green mountains and clear waters are as good as mountains of gold and silver." And、uh, Xinchuan villages, green mountains and、uh, clear waters also boosted local economy. And now we are going to a popular homestay in the village to find out more about the local tourism. And this is uh, uh, one of the four homestay in Xinchuan Village. 老板你好，你好你好，你好，好，两天生意好吗？<笑>不错，真的还可以。好、啊，我们是。Can we give Can you give us a brief introduction toward this homestay? I have opened up my homestay for over two years. Two years and two months. I opened up my homestone in the year 2019. Definitely, we have encountered the impact of COVID-19. But I could see that we stick onto this industry and we did a good job. No matter from the revenue or from the customers, we do register some of the profits. I opened up my homestay on the twenty eighth of September, twenty nineteen. Uh, so during the national holidays and Golden Weeks, this homestay is being booked out. The majority of the tourist is actually coming from the Yangtze River Delta region, from the metropolis, from Shanghai.
啊，你们就啊。Well, now I understand why this place is very popular. You have、uh, this exquisite garden, the swimming pool, and most important of all, the amazing、uh, view of bamboo forests on the mountains. Can you give us more introduction toward the initial purpose of this homestay? What kind of、uh, support did you get from the village? Committee, I think this homestay has been open up for a while. I am actually a local Sichuan people. I go to college in another city, ah,、uh, and I've been spending around eight years in Shanghai, and then I go to Zhuzhou for around ten years. And in the year twenty eighteen, I came back to my hometown. Every time I went back. I feel that my hometown has green mountains and beautiful sceneries. At the very beginning, I could see that my hometown was polluted. Sometimes my kids don't want to go back to my hometown together with me. In the year 2018, we have renovated、uh, the infrastructure of our hometown. We have cleaned the river. And I was talking to my wife that can we do something really good in our hometown. So after with the participations of our whole families, we have designed this homestay. Definitely, we have our own、uh, feelings, our own affection toward our hometown. Definitely, and we also think about with the growing age of my parent, we should come back and take care of my parents. In two thousand nineteen, September the twenty eighth, this homestay suddenly became a boom. And after that, during the national holiday, this homestay was fully booked. We have also done some of the publicity exposures of this homestay. They find this is a nice home, nice building. And they booked it online through some of the applications. In the year 2020 and 2021, we enjoyed a very good profit of this homestay. We also got some of the subsidy from the local government, which is helping us a lot. Especially in our village, we get a lot of support and subsidy. As the party secretary of Sichuan Village, you actually cares about the latest development of the Sichuan Village. You could see that this kind of a green campaign has brought the real greening environment to the Sichuan Village. Can you give us the latest update of the development of the tourism industry in Sichuan Village? I think. For our village to develop the tourism industry, we actually want to make the mountain greener and the water、uh, cleaner. At the same time, I think with the green mount、uh, with the green mountains, the tourist is definitely going to be drawn to here. We are calling for a campaign for our villagers to stay, to start a homestay, and gradually I think this is going to develop. So we have the boss of this homestay here, and after his first attempt into the homestay industry, we are going to persuade more villagers to be a part of this homestay. The Local villagers is going to enjoy the perfect of the tourist industry together with their investment in the local industry. This is to say that we are going to generate an industrial cluster in this village. Secondly, we are trying to find out some of the local attractions. We are going to tell a very good story of the villages' rejuvenation. This is a story needs to be told. 
and we are also going to collect all the female people's ideas about our village. And we also summarize all the village histories, what our party and what our village have done during the liberation war. And on that mountain, we have designed some of the natural results. And currently, we do not charge any tickets. I believe that this is going to be an industry generating millions of RMB. Moving into the future, with more resources, we are going to see a really growing income of the tourism industry. This is going to make our life better. the next spot. Uh, Zhang Mr. Zhang, what is the next plan for you? We have designed some of the tourist destinations. And this is also going to make the tourists to, uh, together to uh, come together with them. With such a booming of the tourists, we are definitely going to see a booming of the homestay industry. Recently, we have planned for the development of the industry. We have also a building the water bank into a really cleaning water bank. This is actually echoing with President Xi's notation about the green mountains and clean rivers. And in the future, it is going to be a very beautiful scenery attracting the tourists. The tourist destination is where the tourist enjoy themselves and relax themselves and bringing and the importance of the tourist destination is a spot which can really bring the spiritual entertainment to the tourist moving into the next step we are going to send more villagers to be trained in the tourist industry Yes, I also see them, because this is a village encircled by mountains. Just as you have mentioned, with the green mountain and the clear water, the way to develop it is an important question hanging in front of us. I think on the other hand, uh, on the other side of the mountain, we are seeing a golden finger like mountain. We call this mountain a mountain of lions. On top of that mountain, we have built a construction, uh, we have built an architect which is called the Hand of Hope. I believe with the leading rules of such an important signal and important symbols, the villager is definitely going to move into the booming industry. Some started to renovate their old houses and building public facilities. So now we are headed 
over to a public service center for the elderly. And the center was established in 2020, and many senior citizens come to the center for recreation and accommodation. And uh, we now see a local dance, folk dance performance at the square. Uh, we are seeing some local villagers dancing. Are they all from the local village? Yes, this is a spontaneous event which has continued for many years. They feel that there is a lot of culture, local culture to be formed. That is to say, a lot of villagers are actively participating in this. inside the uh, service center for the elderly to find out more. And in, and in this workshop, in this room, we see some senior citizens are playing chess. Uh, uh, and uh, now let's talk to this group playing chess. Are you playing chess quite often here? Yes, I do. How do you find this caring center? I find it quite comfortable. Do you eat your meals here? Yes, I sometimes, if I don't have time, I'm going to eat from the cafeteria here. I think the cafeteria's quality is quite good. The village, uh, out of the 3,000 uh, villagers, there are 800 uh, senior citizens, so that is quite a high figure. Uh, so local officials say satisfying the needs of these groups is very crucial. And uh, that is also a big challenge for many Chinese villages are facing. So now let's talk to uh, one of the staff members to find out more. Uh, 你好. Can you introduce us these? What kind of services do you provide here? We have the cafeteria, healthcare center, entertainment center, among other different facilities, the room for chess, the massaging rooms, and we also have the laboratory, which is enabling the local residents to read and write. In this center, are there so many elderly people participating in this? What kind of uh, activities did they participate in? We were working together with the volunteering organizations, and every they we accommodated for around 80 elderly people who enjoyed their activities here and who enjoyed a lot of health care here. These elderly people are quite satisfied with the, our services here. If these elderly people want to enjoy some of the meals, is it free of charge? And for those elderly people who is around, who is above 80 years, 90 years old, it is free of charge. For those who is between 60 years old to 80 years old, for each one of the five years, we have actually subsidized them three to uh, three, seven, and five RMBs according to their different age. Mr. Zhang, your colleague have introduced us that there is around 80 elderly people who are dining here. I have one of my, our curiosities. So where did this money come from for constructing this aging center? It is coming from our village's economic budget. And with the donations from the village management committee, we built this cafeteria. This is a relevant comprehensive center which incorporates restings, caterings, cafeteria, entertainment, and laboratories. We provide in-time services, not only for the elderly people, but for the little kids. This is a very important and comprehensive center. We are also working together with some of the NGOs. 
to let the local villagers and elderly people, and also the young people, if they have time, they can also enjoy the gym here. After it is being put into usage, every day there is around eighty local villagers come to this center and enjoy themselves. Sometimes they work a long distance from our village. They dine here during the lunch, and then in the afternoon they came back to their workplace. Sometimes we help the young people to take care of their parents and their kids. Another importance of this center is that the kids can be taken care of. After school, we have invited some of the tutors specific to this center. At the very initial designing stage of this center, it is being constructed in a cooperative manner, but currently it is under the civil usage. So we, it, this center is being operated through the donations, and I think everything is being carried out quite normally. How do you guarantee a sustainable operation of such a center? If the elderly people are dining here according to their different age, they enjoy different levels of the subsidy. How do you make this cafeteria, make this center sustainable? I have mentioned that for every year, we received the donations, and we also have built up some of the equity structured firm to support the sustainability of our village. After funding this center, we invite the input. Actually, you have mentioned. The donations from the local villagers. So I think the boss from the homestay is also one of the villagers. We believe the local villager is also going to be a very important participant of such mechanisms. We have always calling for the local villagers if they get a business from other country,、uh, other cities, if they are. Very wise.、Uh, if they can thrive and thrive in other cities, we actually want to invite them back to come back to, to their hometowns. We are not only promising them salaries; we also promise them equities. And we hope that all the they can also bring some of the citizens to have a tour here. And this is going to definitely bring some of the clashes of the ideas. So that's the reason why a lot of local villagers are willing to throw their energy and effort into the construction of such a center. They feel that this is our very good environment. Their kid, the second generation of our villagers, their kid is not willing to come back, and when they came back, currently they find they have everything here in this village. With a better air quality and a better environment, that's the reason why the relatives of these local villager they are willing to come to our village and enjoy these beautiful views and beautiful infrastructure. While we are developing such mechanisms to let the villagers who are out of our village and working into the city to come back. This is a very impressive mechanism. This is what we call a cultural center for the Xinchuan village. Can you give us some of the introduction? So in our village, when people are getting married or during the funerals, people used to. A rent and spend a huge sum of money, and they need to rent some of the ground house. But this is a place for the local villagers to get their marriage done, and for the villagers, if they want to party together, seeing some of the shows together, this is a very important place. 
this is actually the center for culture spreading. They started this dancing initially. During the night, they also have other kind of performances and even musical concert. On the note of the lively dance performance, we are approaching to an end of our live stream session here in Xinchuan village of eastern China's Zhejiang province. And uh, today we explore the concrete examples of how of Xinchuan's uh, road, road to common prosperity as it uh, vows to protect its green mountains and the clear waters. And thank you again, Mr. Zhang, for joining us. And thank you, Li Yang, in central Uganda for that report and thank you everyone for tuning in we will see you next time bye bye, oh, bye, -bye.